Welcome to another video from the farm. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a poultry run that will keep them safe from predators. Now in most parts of the world this is going to be a relatively easy process to achieve as you've only got foxes, small predators like that to deal with. Maybe the predatory birds, but other than that, relatively simple. But if you are in a country that's got some animal like bears or big cats or something, you can use the same principles you are just scaling up the gauge of your fencing mostly. Now the very, very, very first thing you're going to want to make sure you've got done is at least a six foot high fence. Now that's going to stop a lot of things getting in there straight away and attempting to get in there. Things like foxes and small cats, they'll generally only be able to hop over the fence if it's sort of under six foot or so because they do the little bounding effect they'll bounce off the floor off the wall then run up the wall a little bit and try and grip the top if you make sure it's tall enough that they can't do that you won't be able to get in now your second and most important step is don't try and do it all with one bit of fence as you can see here i've got two different fences i've got six foot wire running along the floor and then up to the top of the fence and then i've got a two foot oh sorry three foot roll of wire here curled up the fence and then across the floor now you could just get away with just pegging this down and then obviously attaching the wire to the fence which I'll be showing you shortly and that would suffice and what this does is it stops foxes and other stuff like that digging in as you're using their instincts against them basically and they'll come up to your fence and try and dig right at the bottom of your fence they don't come back a few feet and then dig a tunnel in and then obviously as i've done here you one step beyond that is to put some weighted material on the top now i've used big heavy concrete slabs but as you might have seen in another chicken video i've done you can use wood you can use pretty much anything i used rubber matting from a horse stable once pretty much anything that's heavy and fairly solid covering this area of wire here and then that will force your predators to try and dig through that which they won't or they won't bother because they've come too far away from the fence and they don't like to dig tunnels into places as you can see on this side i've just got house bricks sorry driveway bricks holding down the fence and then we've got a few metal pegs every now and then along the bottom and that brings me on to this side as you can see i've put another layer of that two foot fence over the top of our overlap section at the bottom and the original six foot fence behind it. Now I've done that because you probably have a similar thing if you're in Europe. Badgers are a bit of a problem with chicken. Now it's not like the badger's going in there to eat your chickens usually, it's just going in there for eggs and stuff like that. But they cause you problems with the other predators because they'll rip a big hole in the side of your fence just to go in then they'll come out a different side and rip another hole which as everyone knows the wily fox he'll be straight in those holes probably the same night so that's why we do this the extra layer on top now that becomes too much metal for the badger to rip through now this next thing is super simple and you'd probably be doing it anyway or something similar to be tying different levels of fence together but you want to add cable ties or wire ties of some sort with a bit of a dangler i'll show you put a couple on if you've got a bit of loose fence on your other connections don't be afraid to slap them there too because to be honest the more things like this the better now what this does is kind of acts like i'd say i do equate it to something like a bird scarer but for foxes that sort of thing it's unusual for them they don't really know what it is they're unsure what it does and then even if it touches them it feels hard it kind of feels a bit sharp and they don't quite know what to do with them now i've personally witnessed a fox come up to this try and like sort of pour up touch its head on one absolutely crap its pants and run away so yeah cable ties or wire ties to connect you multiple fences together like this sticking out create a bit of an extra jumping barrier for foxes, cats, that sort of thing. Quite lucky here when it comes to aerial predators. We don't really have any that will sort of dive directly into a chicken pen and steal a chicken. But I'm sure quite a lot of you around the world will have to deal with aerial predators. So this is why I've partly done 
this wood beam around the top. Now I've done this more because we keep getting bird flu restrictions in the UK, which mean I'll have to throw a net over the top of this. But if you are wanting to make your roof predator proof from aerial predators, you want a similar setup. So once you've got your wire on, you have sort of a wood bar running all the way around the top and then you're either going to want to use more chicken wire and then throw that straight across the top to sort of close your box in or you're going to want to buy the purpose made aviary netting which is almost like a big whole fish net basically that you'll be able to get big pieces of on rolls that then you can drape over whole long runs like this one now obviously once you've gone to the extent of putting all this stuff around the edge you're going to want to be able to get in there yourself which obviously leaves a weak point so you're going to want to do a very simple thing once you've put your gate in just put a decent amount of slab overlapping in and out of your gate as you can see here and then that gives you the same principle that you're using which is they won't come back to dig a tunnel they'll only dig along the obstacle and obviously with solid concrete slabs solid obstacle they aren't getting in and then I've got this fairly rigidly tied on here as you can see no wobble to it but what I usually do as well as a bit of a backup put in a little stopper like so wedged in and then nothing can pull this gate open obviously you can achieve that with like some sort of locking mechanism at the bottom you never want to keep your lock up the top because obviously predators will just pull at this bottom corner so when you're securing your gate secure the corner like I say with a stick big block or go out and buy an actual clasp if you want now all of this run setup took me sort of two and a half hours to set up or something did a little trade with my friend to swap these chickens that were getting harassed at her place and eaten alive she lost about 20 the day before they came here for a couple of my little micro pigs so it was a rush job and like i say i've thrown this up ridiculously fast and even with buying the wire, the posts and stuff, you're talking less than £100 for this run, which is a massive run for what people would usually be spending. If you're talking one of these pre-bought igloo chicken runs or something like that, you've basically got a rabbit hutch for £500. And obviously, this is way better for the chickens. And to be honest, a lot more secure. Now, as I've mentioned, you can tweak this fencing sort of however you want, really. But the core principle is decent amount of height at least six foot multiple layers or really good high gauge wire at the bottom and then you want a piece of wire that comes down and out otherwise you've got to dig a trench and bury your wire but nobody wants to work that hard do they as i imagine it probably would have taken me the best part of a day or two to dig the trench for this wire rather than the two and a half hours to complete the whole thing like i say and I have to say, for such a quick job and using pretty much all recycled materials from around the farm, basically these posts and wire, this is their third use now. These slabs, we've oh, I've had these 10 years, maybe. But yeah, finally found a use for them. Well, I hope this video has helped you get a better understanding of what you actually need to do to protect your poultry, your chickens, from foxes, ground predators and aerial predators because it's not that difficult you just talk, like I say have to play against their instincts a little bit use your human smarts to outbeat their animal smarts shall we say <laughs> right, so now all the chickens are in two ducks and a goose it's time to sort their waters and drinkers out so I'm gonna go get all that now get myself a little drink I think too right I hope you've enjoyed this quick video on sort of how to protect your poultry from various predators as I've said um, if you have, don't forget to give this video a like. If you've got any sort of better ways that you think are, are cheaper and easier than this, because obviously I, this, I've done this yeah, two and a half hours or so for ridiculously cheap, but if you think you know a better way, leave a comment below also. Right then, until next time, bye-bye.